Yo guys, what is going on? Blobs is back. Welcome back to another episode of Top Drives and another episode of What Can You Get From That Pack? Now, today's pack in question is the GT Series Super Carbon or the GT Series Carbon. Yay, another GT Series. Because this game is just getting more and more fun. We Anyway, I can make an entire video about why I don't like GT series, but I'm not trying to get a stroke right now, so I'm not going to do that. 1980s and 2020s, uh, APGP and uh, uh, JPT. Uh, they, they, they combine the names together, and I'm just seeing this for the first time as Grand Prix Pro Tour, okay? Now, I will start off the video about opening the pack, but this is the pack that we're gonna review, but I'm gonna open it, because I think I've, never, I've not said this before, but Hutch, recently, they've been doing this thing where for every GT series or Tri-Series, they let you open, like, a 50% off boosted carbon fiber. Dude, no matter how terrible the wrecks are, this is always going to be worth it. So I'm always going to be opening opening this offer regardless. And I think knowing Hutch, eventually they're going to realize, wait a minute, this offer is good. It's too good. And they'll, they're, they're going to remove it probably. But yeah, 20% epic, 3% legendary. Let's open it and then we'll go review the pack. Also, interestingly enough, they don't have the platinum pack in the store this time. So I don't know what's up with that. Maybe they'll release it. Um... Uh, when, when maybe they'll release it when the finals come out or whatever, like the, the final challenge. I'm not sure about that. But yeah, anyway, 20% epic, 3% legendary, or are we just going to be normies? Let's get it. We are normies. Mazda CX-50, but that's not a bad card to unpack, to be completely honest with you. So let's get into the pack review. All right, my beautiful people, let's get into it, okay? These are the ranks, or these are the tier levels. We've got highly versatile, versatile, requires some criteria, requires a special tag challenge, and bro, they made it the only option. Also known as hot garbage. Now, most of my ratings, honestly, are gonna go on vibes. Mostly when I do this, um, this series, I'm like heavily reliant on Top Drive's records. I do have some Tom Drive records times like stuck in my head. Like for example, the Mazda CX-8 is one of the best city street small cars that you can use for RQ57 and below. And yeah, I'll remember some of those, but I'm gonna be rating these cars a lot of it based off personal experiences. I own most of these cars already. I've raced against all of these cars before. I know which are the ones which make more impact for a player and which do not. But if I do miss some shots, feel free to let me know down in the comments below. I'm open to criticism on this one especially this one so we're gonna begin with the hyundai elantra n now this is a pretty good rq61 medium ground clearance sedan um now here's the thing dude top drives is getting more and more saturated by the day and there was a time where i didn't want to make a lot of these videos in this series because it's getting harder and harder to upgrade uh to not upgrade but critique each car but then i kind of just told myself i went back to the drawing board and i was like okay i i, I have to review cars a different way now i can't review them as in like you know them being punching way above their belt as long as they're like the best car within their own rq they're already pretty damn good at this point so the elantra is a really good 61 um uh, against other medium ground clearance uh front wheel drive cars or even some rear wheel drive saloons like for example the blue jag um the elantra actually is pretty good on the more twisty stuff it's not much of a dragster it doesn't really matter it gets the job done on the city streets as well as one of the twisty track sets against cars within its own niche and on its rq level as well now let's talk about the front wheel drive stuff um we're gonna be talking about the hyundais now these two hyundais are both worse then don't worry that they're not bottom tier i'm just putting them there to highlight them in this in this moment they're both worse than the hyundai veloster n i believe uh which is the lighter or the darker blue hyundai which is rq also 54 or 55 somewhere around that range it's not a 2020 car it came before 2020 uh but that is something to think about because when you take you know these cars outside of this you know very niche criteria for one gt series these Hyundais are probably going to be, you know, competing with the other front-wheel drive Hyundais that aren't included in this pack. So that's something to think about. But these two cars ain't too bad. They're, they're very run-of-the-mill front-wheel drive cars. They're what you expect from front-wheel drive cars. They handle well. And, you know, that's really what you want. I say it requires some criteria for these cars to be useful. Um, they ain't the best. They ain't the worst. They're just all right. Um, and the, the good thing about APGP, uh, honestly, is that a lot of APGP are very by-the-books you know, useful cars. Like a lot of APGP cars 
our bottom line requires some criteria like their bottom line average because they kind of just know um what they need to be like their front wheel drive cars just handle well uh their standard tire cars are usually just four wheel drive um you know their cars with mra usually have really good mra well that's you know like the, the hyundai but the hyundai got nerfed so not anymore so things like that like apgp cars are you know inherently pretty useful so that makes this pack pretty decent i'm glad to say that there's no enw bullshit this time uh now moving on to the other hyundai so we've got the kona the kona ends a good one Oh, the Kona N's a really good one. I want to put it versatile. Some people might even put it as highly versatile. MRA is good. It's got an SUV tag. It's high ground clearance. It's also front wheel drive. Um, it's a very niche car. Like, it's really good in very niche situations, but it's very good in many niche situations. So, I think it's a very versatile car. It's pretty damn good. Uh, moving on to the Hyundai Kona. It's four-wheel drive and standard. Again, you can't go wrong with four-wheel drive and standard. I wouldn't say it's one of the best, but I'll definitely put it in requires some criteria. Now, the all service tire cars is pretty easier to grade. So, the Palisade is, you know, they only made it the only option. Uh, the Hyundai Santa Fe, you know, requires a special tag challenge. It's the same thing with the uh, Santa Cruz. I think the Santa Cruz was, was it Year of the Dragon? I think it was Year of the Dragon, wasn't it? Or was it Year of the Rabbit? I think it was Year of the Dragon. Um, or something like that. Or, or, or was it, um, it was it was part of one special tag. I'm not sure if it was this year or late last year. But literally after that special tag, I have not used the Santa Cruz ever again. So that is like the legit definition of requires a special tag challenge. Um, the Mazda 323 GT Turbo is versatile, man. Like for an arc, for a mid-range Ultra at 57, I know for a fact that that's one of the best slalom uh, ultra rare standard tire cars in the entire game. And I think within APGP, it's the best uh, ultra rare standard tire car uh, for the slalom track set. So, you know, for a mid-range RQ, you, you're getting a lot of value out of it, you know? And when the game gets more and more saturated, when there are more and more cars filling up every little niche, um, it's getting harder and harder to find cars that, you know, hit way above their belt. But the Mazda 323 is one of those cars, in my opinion. And the only reason why I wouldn't put it in highly versatile is because, like, if it had that accolade of being the best in slalom, um, and maybe in some, maybe two more, two or three more track sets, I would definitely put it in highly versatile, but it's a really good car. I'll put it at the, at the top of versatile. Maybe because the Mazda 6 Grand Touring, bro, they made it the only option. Seriously, when was the last time you saw the Mazda 6 Grand Touring being used? I think it was useful in one, one Tri-Series. One Tri-Series when APGP was really new, and I think there was like a test bowl or something, and like there weren't a lot of cars you could use, and the Mazda 6 was like one of the best dragsters that you could use as an option. That's the only time, man. I've never seen that car used ever again. Um, now, these four-wheel drive Mazda SUVs, they're all pretty damn good. I'm going to put, you know, three. Nah, I'll put two of those in, in Versatile. And I'll put this one in Requires Some Criteria. I'll put this one in requires some criteria as well i do rate the 57 slightly higher than 60 mainly because the 57 is surprisingly good at city street small but the cx60 is very average like it is what you expect from an rq60 it doesn't you know lose it doesn't have any surprising losses across the board but it doesn't have any surprising wins it's a very average car it requires some criteria but you can use it but then again there are better options you know like if you had to use a mazda 4 drive center tire ultra air more often than not people will try and use the cx50 and the cx90 um i kind of want to put the cx50 in a highly versatile i know for a fact that it is slightly better um but i'm gonna put both of them in the same ranks they're both equally very useful center tire cars moving on to the mazda familia sport I i'm gonna say requires a special tag challenge honestly uh i don't really tend to use it that often um i really kind of go towards the r33 skyline um maybe it's not fair to compare those two cars together because they come from different updates and they're meant for different things but the familiar sport 4 is a car that i have fully upgraded and i don't think i've ever touched before so that does say something in my eyes the mitsubishi l200 is highly versatile that's really good i mean that's 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 the definition of a bargain that's 80 handling 80 plus handling four-wheel drive off-road tires um and it's really cheap to use yeah that's fantastic that's like the japanese version of like the american ford bronco it's 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 really good the american dream ford bronco not american dream american frontier uh ford bronco uh moving on to some more all service tire cars now these these Subarus are not too bad. I'm not going to put them in, you know, a bro, they made it the only option. Uh, they handle pretty well and they are lightweight. That's one thing that I think a lot of people tend to forget when it comes to race.
rating also for tower cards you do usually get a little bit of a bonus when you are just under two tons and those three cards are pretty light i think they're around thousand seven something like that um mitsubishi outlander phgb though bro they made it the only option i don't know when was the last time i touched that thing leborg ah leborg is good that's highly versatile man that's a really good one uh four wheel drive center tires it was the second one or the second best option second or third best option behind this is a great segue by the way the super legacy uh bw that car remember that that used to be an ultra and that used to be killing everything left right and center now that it's an epic now that it's so much more harder to upgrade and now it's competing against a different pool of cars i gotta drag it down to require some criteria i don't think it's bad i don't think it's bad not at all but it could be better it's useful and i feel like if it was like a lot easier or cheaper to upgrade compared to like a cadillac ct6 or even its direct competitors like the hyundai ionic then i would race it higher but unfortunately hutch is not going to balance our game and all epics need to be upgraded the same way which is stupid um now let's just talk about four-wheel drive hierarchy right the hyundai ionic is versatile the hyundai ionic 677 is highly versatile that's the best one the legacy is all right any more four-wheel drive center tire cars let's just go through all of them the mazda cx30 is requires a special tag challenge the mazda 3 2.5 all-wheel drive i'm going to give it versatile um versatile or highly versatile i think it deserves to be in one of these two places you guys can decide maybe a very low high versatile these two cars are synonymous they're really 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 strong and i think that wraps it up for the four wheel drive center tire cars for the epics no there's one more that's the cx60 which is requires a special tag challenge it's not bad it's just that look at what it's competing against like although it's not bad the benchmark for a four wheel drive standard tire car in the Asia category is really high. So the CX-60, although it's not bad, it's just really expensive to upgrade and there are just so many better options as you can see above it. Now, moving on to the off-road stuff. Let's move on to the off-road stuff. We have the Nissan Bluebird and the Sylvia. The Bluebird is still fantastic. I'm going to give it versatile. It's getting cheaper and cheaper to use by day, and it still brings a lot of value. Four-wheel drive off-road tires, you cannot go wrong with that. That is really good. The Sylvia 200SX, though, I think it requires a special tag challenge or a special event. Um, there are better options to use out there. I mean, the Sylvia has kind of gone down in value now that the Mazda RX-7 exists, you know, competing uh, directly against it in that rear-wheel drive niche. The Mazda RX-7 is a really strong car. I'm going to put it in versatile. Uh, the Bluebird is also really strong. It is better than the Sylvia. The Sylvia, honestly, again, suffers from the same disadvantages as the CX-60. It's so much more expensive to upgrade. Why would you do it? Why would you do it when there are better options to do? That's the thing. You got to balance those cars out. You know, Epic's got to be more fair. You know, you can't have things like the Mazda RX-7 and the Sylvia 200 being the exact same to upgrade. Like, no one's gonna touch the Sylvia anymore. It's kinda sad, uh, because it used to be a pretty decent ultra. The thing about the Sylvia, though, that doesn't make it that strong of an epic, is that although it went up to an epic um, from an ultra, and it was a good ultra, it was never the best ultra. It was always behind the shadow of the Lancia 037, and it still is behind the shadow of the Lancia 037, because the Lancia 037 also went up to epic grade. Uh, now, let's move on to Subaru Outback. Yeah, that that is garbage. I love the photo, and I loved it as an Ultra, but when it went up to Epic, Hutch really killed it. The Subaru WRX S4 requires a special tag challenge. They're just, you know, Subaru four-wheel drive cars. Dime a dozen. Dime a dozen. And that thing doesn't really make it any more special than all the others that are in the game right now. Uh, Mitsubishi Ages R2. I think some people might disagree with me. I require some criteria. Look, um, I was really excited to pull this car. I, I owned it. I had two at one point because they gave it out for free in the uh, Journey to the East campaign, if you remember that shit show. Um, and the Angels are too. I mean, a lot of people were excited for it because not a lot of APGP cars had that high of a top speed. That is the highest car, a highest ABGB car, uh, or it is the ABGB car of the highest top speed epic and below. I, I'm pretty sure that is a fact. The problem is though, um, I've had it, it was my first APGP Epic by the way, and I've had it since the beginning of the update until today. I've never found an, an event where the Mitsubishi HSR actually made a difference. There was always a better option. Like the only times where this car could have been used in like a testable situation, you know, the RQ is high and you could probably use a Brabham and the Brabham's are better. They got higher top speed and they're usually less, you know, they're more lenient on RQ. You can use legendary. So yeah, man, the Mitsubishi HSR, like you need, 
I don't, I don't even want to put it in some criteria. You need a lot of criteria. You need a special tag challenge. You need not only a testable APGP event, you need it you know, directed to APGP, and you need it directed to the 80s. <laughs> like, you you need a lot of niches to make that car shine. I'm going to put it in. It requires a special tag challenge, STC. Uh, Hyundai Envision 74, I still think is versatile. Even after the MRA nerf, the Zero to 60 is really good, and the handling isn't too bad. Um, for a 74, I still think that it's really strong. I'm gonna put it in versatile. It might be a low versatile, somewhere in between versatile and requires some criteria, but it's still a pretty respectable car. Mazda 254i, this is strong. It's really strong. I'm gonna put it in versatile. It does lose to the Bufori in some cases. The Bufori that is also 78 or 76, I believe, actually. It's cheaper to use and um, it's just a better twisty car. Don't forget that the Bufori and the Mazda are both APGP as well. Um, where the Bifuori lacks in though, and what makes the Mazda higher in RQ is that the Mazda is a better dragster. It has way better MRA. That being said though, it's not really a dragster, is it? There are better dragsters for you to use. Just use a Hellcat or something, you know what I mean? So it's a personal car. It's good. It's also from the 80s, but I just think it's just shy of the highest spot. Um, moving on to the Mazda 3 TCR, again, it's versatile. It's a good car. It's a great front wheel drive car. Um, but the funny thing is I think ENW actually brought better front wheel drive cars. Now, let alone those are prize cars. So Citroens are prize cars. But nonetheless, there are better options to use. Now we move on to the legendaries. Now, the bad thing about this pack is that the legendaries aren't that good. Um, let's, let's talk about the legendaries, right? We've got the Mazda 717. I think it's, it requires criteria for sure. The Nissan Silvia Super Silhouette, which is a really cool, like, you know, uh, mini GT diecast. Also a really good Hot Wheel. I'm not sure if Hot Wheel actually made it. Like, Hot Wheel made an R33 version of this Liberty Walk. Um, but yeah, I'm, our, our Liberty Walk made an homage on the R33 from that Skyline. I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, but outside of that, though, it's not really good. <laughs> uh, MRA is in 100. Handling can't even get to 100. It's it's just a decent legendary at best. Hyundai Veloster and TCR as well. I think it's just meh. And then you get the high range stuff. The Brabums. Oh, my God. The Brabums are just kind of overrated. Their 0 to 60s are pretty damn bad. MRA is good. Like, it's 105 and 110, respectfully. But, like... Up in that range, just use a Koenigsegg, my guy. You know, they got similar MRA, MRA and way higher top speed. So it's kind of hard to believe why anyone would use uh, the Brabums outside of, you know, an event like this. Um, but then again, there are still higher range legendaries. I'm definitely not going to put them in the highest rank, but they are all right. Last but not least is the Mazda 757. And I think this is the only car which I can, with some leniency, put it in highly versatile, but that actually feels wrong. Um, it's got the same 0 to 60 as, you know, the Brabums, which is kind of sad because like the RQ difference is like two or three between those cars. It feels kind of wrong to put them in highly versatile. I, I genuinely, but again, I do respect the 80s niche that it provides. And it definitely is a step above the super silhouette. I just, it feels wrong not putting the legendary in highly versatile. That might be a pity put. That, that honestly might be a pity put. Putting it in highly versatile, that might be a pity thing. I don't think it deserves to be highly versatile. No, let's, let's, let's be real about it, man. It's versatile. That's about it. Yeah, that's going to be it, man. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a pretty decent pack. Like, there's not a lot of, like, genuine garbage, in my opinion. As long as you stay away from the all-surface tire stuff, you know, with the lower handling, I think you're pretty safe. Like, you're going to get a car that's at least somewhat decent. Like, we opened the pack just now, and we got ourselves, I believe, with a CX-50. And honestly, I wasn't even too mad about that. That was pretty decent of a pull. Um, oh, I would still love to get a Kona or an Elantra. I might actually open one more. Oh, frick it. Let's open one more. Why not? <laughs> All right, we're back. Another GT Series Super Carbon. Yeah, it's not that bad of a pack. There are a couple Ultras in here that I I actually do want to get. So I'm going to open one more. As long as I keep my gold above 20,000, I think I'm pretty okay. So let's get it. Let's get it. Dodge Cult probably wasn't the best idea, but this isn't a bad pack to open, especially like if you're looking for Ultras. Like I would like a Kona or an Elantra. I never got it from the height of APGP, so maybe I'll get it now. Let's go.
for real. This song just makes me so happy. <laughs> me too. Imagine being Asian in the 50s, looking nippy, leather jacket, looking sleek, look like Presley, look so deadly, got a jukebox back at home, feeling jazzy, turn it on and play it slow, like the movies with the ladies, they so fine. Imagine being Asian in the 50s, looking nippy, leather jacket, looking sleek, look like Presley, look so deadly, got a jukebox back at home, feeling jazzy, turn it on and play it slow, like the movies with the ladies, they so fine.